How to use a knife like a pro. To hold the knife itself, use your index finger and thumb to pinch right above the handle. Once you have a good grip on that, just drop your three fingers. So my index finger is curved around the top of the handle and my thumb is flush to the blade of the knife. The reason why we're gripping up on this knife is to give us more control. If we grip further back, we're gonna have far less stability. And don't put your finger up on the knife, it's not gonna help you out. Now it's gonna feel weird at first, but you'll get used to it, I promise. It's the most effective and ergonomic way that you can use the knife. And with your non-dominant hand, we're gonna use something called the claw. The claw serves two purposes, to guide our knife as we cut and also to protect our fingers. I'll demonstrate on celery. First, we're gonna find the most stable side of the food. If we flip it upside down, it's gonna be a bit more stable for us. This is gonna prevent us from cutting ourselves. So let's see this in action. I'm using my middle finger from my claw to guide my knife. My knife stays flush against that finger as I cut. This will allow you to not even look at what you're doing. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to keep your cutting board from sliding around. Before, after. All you're gonna need is a paper towel. Get the paper towel damp and stick it underneath your cutting board. Now the board's not gonna slip as you cut your vegetables. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. There are two effective ways to cut with a chef's knife. I'm gonna demonstrate on a cucumber. The first way is to use a rocking motion, just like the wheels of a train. To get the most leverage from the rocking motion, you wanna use the back two inches of your knife. You always keep the tip of the knife on the cutting and you're rocking forward. Another way to cut is just going up and down. This way is super simple if you're using your claw and using that middle finger as your guide. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. This is my raccoon pile. As I'm prepping, I put all of my scraps into this bowl. This saves me multiple trips to the trash can. I put all of my scraps into my raccoon pile and after I'm done prepping everything, then I throw it away. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. Hi, little chef. Let me teach you what knives you'll need in your kitchen. So 90% of the time I use one knife, which is my chef's knife. I keep two in my bag. This knife is a lot heavier, which I love because I don't have to put as much effort into it. And this knife is a little lighter. I have more control over it. Check the link in my bio to get to my Amazon storefront. I have all of these knives and all the accessories for them. So a couple of other knives that I keep in my bag is a fillet knife. So this is used for filleting fish, fabricating a chicken. And the last knife that I keep in my bag is a little paring knife. It's to work with smaller fruits and vegetables, to peel potatoes, cut up strawberries, whatever. I would advise you not to get a full knife set because you'll spend tons of money on knives that you're not gonna use that much. I would use that investment to get a really high quality chef's knife. And then a middle of the line filet knife and paring knife. I get Dexter brand, they're fantastic. And if you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. Do you know why some knives have these dimples on them? Let me show you why. Foods high in moisture such as potatoes and tomatoes tend to stick to a regular knife. It's gonna create suction as you cut through it. However, the dimples will break that vacuum. Let me show you. Here we have a potato. With the regular knife, it's gonna stick. With the dimpled knife, it's gonna slide right off. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. This is not sharpening your knife. This is called a honing steel. And the only thing it's doing is straightening your blade. It's good practice to hone your knife right before you use it. But you gotta make sure you're doing it correctly. First things first, you wanna be safe. Your hand goes below this handle. I'm just telling you now. No matter what, the knife will be stopped by the handle. Hold the knife at about a 15 degree angle and work from the butt of the knife to the tip of the knife. Pass it through about five times each side. If this method scares you, no worries, there's another way. Take your honing seal, put it upside down on a cutting board. Same thing. Another cool thing about this is that it's magnetic. So if any metal burrs come off of this, it will be attracted to this. But I still like to take a rag and clean the knife before I start cutting. And if you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. Let's take our knives from this. Yikes. This was like my favorite knife and it's seen better days. There are all of these nicks in the blade. So we're gonna sharpen this up. These are called whetstones. They're in my Amazon storefront, link in bio. 
We'll soak these in water for 30 minutes. They're porous, so you'll start to see bubbles come out of them. My stones are ready. We'll start with the lowest number first. The lower the number, the more grit there is. Hence the name, wet stone. You're gonna be using a lot of water in this process. You're supposed to hold your knife at a 15 degree angle. It's hard to find 15 degrees, so I use three quarters. Stack them up on the side and find that angle. When you rest the top of your knife on the quarters, that will be the perfect angle. You wanna use the whole stone as you sharpen. If you just use one little area, it will create a divot over time. Start at the butt of the knife at the top of the stone, drag your knife down all the way to the tip. Rather than sliding your knife down like this, you can also go up and down, but still make sure you're using the whole stone and getting every point of the blade. I passed it through about 15 times on one side. Now we're gonna flip the knife. You can do that by simply flipping the knife over and going towards yourself, or you can use your non-dominant hand. Flip the stone to get to a higher grit, and we'll keep on going. We'll move on to our next stone. We'll use our 3000 grit. Flip the stone to our last stone, which is 8000. It's all sharpened up. Make sure to clean this because there's clay all over it. Whew, okay. And if you want to learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to julienne a carrot. We'll start off by peeling it. Always make sure you're working on a clean board. I put my scraps into a raccoon pile. A julienne cut is two inches in length. Cut off the root side and make a two inch cut. Now we're gonna square this carrot off. We're always looking for stability when we're making our knife cuts. This is a round carrot, so there are no sides to create stability. We need to create that. So we're gonna square it off by cutting off one side, flip it onto that cut we just made. Now it's super stable. We cut it into a rectangle. Now we need to make eighth of an inch sheets of carrot. Now we have our sheets of carrot, stack them up and make eighth of an inch slices. These are called julienne cuts or matchstick cuts. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. How to cut tomatoes. You can use a chef's knife, one of these guys, but it has to be super, super sharp. If it's not sharp, you're gonna squish the tomato. So I like to use my little serrated paring knife. Instead of pushing down the tomato like we would do with the chef's knife, we're gonna be using a sawing motion that doesn't crush it. First thing we're gonna do is take out this core. Grip all the way up on your paring knife and do a circular cut around the core and it will pop right out. We'll cut this tomato in half. If we're doing small dice pieces, we're gonna make little sheets of tomato, make slices one way, turn it, and make slices the other way. There's your small diced tomato. To make even cleaner looking small diced tomato, we're gonna take out the seeds. So I cut it into a wedge and I'm gonna take my knife and remove the seeds from the outside of the tomato. Make slices one way, turn it, make slices the other way. By removing the seeds, it's a little more appealing to the eye. If you wanna learn more, check the link in my bio for cooking classes. 